Welcome to Accounting 101 Lesson 4A, where I'm going to go through um, a recap of the cash and credit transactions for sales and purchases, and then show you how to deal with goods that are returned either by customers to us or to suppliers from us. Okay, so as I said, we're going to recap the double entry transactions required to post cash and credit sales and purchases. And then we're going to consider the double entry transactions required when we need to post sales returns. So returns that are coming back to us from customers and purchase returns, those that are coming or going, sorry, to suppliers from us, how to post those into the T accounts. So just a quick recap then about cash sales and purchases. So when we use the term cash to refer to sales and purchases, it doesn't mean necessarily that cash has changed hands. It could be a transaction through the bank account. It just means that goods are paid for immediately. So remember that the term goods just is a generic term that can refer to either sales or purchases. We never have a T account called goods anywhere in our system. So cash sales is where goods are sold to the customer and payment is received immediately from that customer, either by cash or by check. And cash purchases, we buy goods for resale, we pay for them immediately, either by cash or check. So for cash sales, the double entry is to debit the bank if we receive a check or a bank transfer, or to debit the cash if we receive cash, and to credit the sales revenue account. So that's the income. So the asset increases, either the bank or the cash, and so does the income account. We've recorded the income on the credit side and the net effect as always with our double entry is zero. For cash purchases we're debiting purchases that's an expense account and we're crediting bank if it's a check or a bank transfer that we've paid by or cash if we've paid in cash. So the expense account purchases is increasing that's the debit and the asset the bank or the cash is reduced that's the credit entry. When we move on to credit sales and purchases, so credit sales revenue. This is where goods are sold to a customer who will then pay us at a later date. That customer has been allowed credit. And credit purchases is where we've bought goods for resale from a supplier and we've paid for them at a later date. They're on credit. So we can still use the same sales and purchase accounts to record the sale or the purchase, but we're going to need some extra accounts in order to deal with these transactions. And that's going to involve the people that owe us money, the trade receivables, or people to whom we owe money, the trade payables. So when we deal with a credit sale, we're going to have to debit the customer's account. So we'll set up an account with the name of the customer and debit that account to record the asset, the amount that's owed to the business. And we're going to credit sales revenue. That's the income account. So still the net effect is zero. If we've got credit purchases, still going to debit purchases, always debit purchases and then credit the supplier's account. So we'll set up an account with the name of the supplier to whom we owe money. So the account um, recording the expense, the purchases is increased and we're recording a liability on the credit side. So no cash has changed hands at this point in the proceedings. So the bank and the cash account are not involved at this stage. Obviously, when the customer pays us money, we'll then need to record that um, in money going into the bank. So we'll be debiting the bank account and crediting the customer account. And similarly, when we pay the supplier, that's when the bank or the cash is involved, we credit the bank account to record the payment and debit the supplier to reduce the amount we owe them. But we'll see how that works in a minute. Now, we've got another complication in that sometimes goods are returned to suppliers. So we have returns outwards going back to our suppliers and customers will also return goods to us. So we have sales returns, or returns inwards coming back to us. So we can call it either of those things, returns inwards, sales returns. Um, so the way to deal with this is to set up a separate returns inwards or sales returns account, and that will behave in the opposite way to the sales. So whereas the sales account is always credit entries in there, the sales returns account will always have debit entries in there. We must keep them separate. We don't want to see debits in the sales account. We need to keep a separate log of our returns so we can monitor how much stuff is being returned to us by our customers because it might be a problem with quality. We need to monitor that because it, it's going to involve cost to us if we have to restock things, or it might indicate that there's a problem with our supplier that we need to investigate. Perhaps quality isn't all it should be. But back to the double entry, we're going to debit returns inwards. That's a separate T account, as I said, from the uh, sales account and credit the customer's account. So the re trade receivable account is going to be credited to reduce the amount the customer owes to us. When it comes to returns outwards, so this is purchase returns, this is goods that are being sent back to our suppliers, the 
because we ordered them by mistake or because they're faulty, whatever the reason, we're going to debit the supplier's account, so that's the trade payable account, to reduce the amount we owe them, and we're going to credit a separate purchase returns account. Okay, so we don't want to credit purchases. Purchases should only ever have transactions on the debit side. There shouldn't be anything on the credit side of your purchases T account. We need to set up a separate purchases returns account. So we're now going to look at some transactions and see if we can work out the double entry. So the first thing we did was to sell some goods on credit to A. Harris. So A. Harris is a customer. He or she is a credit customer. So no money has changed hands in this instance. So the double entry is going to be to debit A. Harris, trade receivable. We're going to set up an account in the name of A. Harris and credit sales. So if you remember, one of the four rules of accounting, or double entry bookkeeping, is that the sales always credited. So whenever we make a sale, we always have to credit the sales account. The debit depends on how that's being paid for. So if the customer has paid us by bank or check at the time, debit the bank or cash account. But in this case, no money's been received. So we debit A. Harris. A. Harris has then returned goods to us. So we have to do things the other way around. So when we made the sale, we debited A. Harris. If A. a. Harris has returned goods, we need to credit the A. Harris account to reduce the amount that A. Harris owes to us and debit a sales returns account. So don't debit sales, never be tempted to debit sales. The double entry is to debit sales returns and credit the customer's account, in this case, A. Harris. When we buy goods, so we bought goods from P. Smithers. Remember, we don't want a T account called goods. It needs to be called purchases. So buying goods means purchases. So from P. Smithers, £125. So in this case, no money has changed hands yet. Still need to debit purchases though. Anytime we buy goods, debit purchases. So we're gonna debit purchases with 125 and we're gonna set up account, an account for P Smithers, a trade payable account and credit that. And that will record the liability. If we then return goods to P Smithers, where we bought goods, we credited the P Smithers account to record the liability. When we return goods, that's gonna reduce the liability. So we need to debit P Smithers and um, credit purchase returns or returns outwards. So that's the double entry debit P Smithers, credit purchase returns. If A. Harris then pays us £225 by cheque, and that would be because we sold goods, remember up there, 275 and then A. Harris returned goods, £50. The difference between the two is 225 So this is the final part of the proceedings. We're going to debit the bank account and we're going to credit the A. Harris account. So that A. Harris account should have a balance now of zero. If we look at what happens when we pay P. Smithers, we're going to pay him £95 in cash. So that's because we bought goods costing £125, but we returned goods valued at £30. So the difference between the two is £95 that we owe to P. Smithers. So we are going to, um, I didn't finish that, so that should say sorry, 125 minus 30. Just notice the deliberate mistake there. So in this case, we're going to debit the P. Smithers account to reduce the liability and credit cash. So that's how you deal with returns in and returns out. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching.